Now, Operation Dudula leader in Tlanchla, Lux Lamini, has been arrested. His arrest reportedly stems from a Soweto operation held by the organization over the weekend. For more now, we're joined by Daniel Radebe. He's the Operation Dudula's deputy chairperson. He joins me now on the line, um, and he is at Joburg Central as we speak. Uh, Daniel, thank you so much for your time this evening. It sounds like everything is happening uh, pretty quickly. Can you just confirm for us uh, whether um, the, the uh, Operation Dudula leader leader Lux Lamini has indeed been arrested and uh, have you got any idea of, uh, of, 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 of what charges he could potentially be facing? Uh, good evening to the listeners and yourself. Yes, we can confirm that uh, Nzanta has been uh, arrested. He was uh, arrested when he was leaving uh, Kaya FM studios after having an interview. And uh, this emanates from uh, Sunday's last Sunday's uh, incident when a drug uh, dealer house was searched in the presence of police. And uh, to our surprise, they laid charges against him of breaking with an intent uh, to, to steal. Now, uh, according to reports, uh, the charges brought against him was laid at the Dobsonville police station on Wednesday. Uh, have you been given any indication as to who laid those charges? Uh, the, I, I, uh, well, I know that uh, EFF said it will be laying charges or assisting the owner of the house or the alleged drug dealer to lay charges against Scandalax at the Dobsonville police station. And again, to our surprise, he was arrested by the province and is detained at the Johannesburg Central Police Station, not at Dobsonville Police Station. Okay, what are you hearing from the police? Because if you're saying that the police were present uh, when Operation Dudula went about uh, looking for these drugs, as you mentioned, um, uh, have you heard anything from the police in reaction to that now? Nothing as yet, because if they were present, if there was any breaking in the presence of police, they were supposed to act immediately. Why wait for someone to lay charges if you see something illegal taking place in your presence? If someone is breaking a shop or killing someone in your presence, you would wait for someone to lay charges before you react to that? Is that not the purpose of patrolling so that they can prevent crime? So if that was criminal, how do they then allow a criminal activity to take place in their presence and wait for charges to be laid by political organizations and react to that. How does the EFF uh, come into all of this now? <clears throat> we are quite not sure how do they come in into all this because there was an allegation that that is their member. And the reason uh, Operation Tutula was there and everybody was there we were reacting to the outcry of the community, hence we were accompanying Dobsonville community to point out to the police as we usually do that this is the house that is a problem. And that there are petitions that have been signed by the community about the very same uh, alleged drug dealer that this person is a problem in the community. They signed the petition, they submitted it, nothing was done. So there is now EFF supporting him, saying they will assist him to open charges and uh, to make sure that Intantalax is being arrested. Uh, what do you say to people accusing your organization of just being an excuse for vigilantes to uh, do uh, what they want? Um, uh, some might say that if the police were with you when you went and searched the house of this alleged drug dealer, um, why didn't you just let the police do their work that they are legally mandated <clears throat> to do? And it would have been so much easier um, if that was the case. Very interesting question. Not unless other people, when uh, you play your news on ENCA, they will be sleeping or outside the country. We've been in Uvel, we've been in Hilbro in various places. Where we'll be moving with local community and they will just point out police will go in and search to satisfy the community. We had a successful uh, in, uh, incident in Pinville. Drugs were found, in White City drugs were found by the police who went in to search. Now, to our surprise in this incident, in this case, when we got there, police refused to search the house, whereas in other areas they do search on the request of the community, local community that will be accompanying. 
Now, in this incident, they refused to go in and search the house. And yet there was a petition that was signed by the community long before or prior, you know, this incident of Sunday. Well, normally it also means that there needs to be legal paperwork done before you can go into somebody's private property and, and search it. Is that perhaps why the police didn't want to go in? If they found the stolen house that is said to be in a particular house or a track appointed in that house, do they wait for the paperwork before they go in and get that kind of recover, that kind of effect arrest? No, they don't. Where there's a suspicion of criminal activity taking place, we expect them to respond to the community's request or outcry. So this is not vigilantism. It's community members, as we, as we keep on saying, to do like it's community-based community members who came together to fight against crime, to fight it to reclaim their economy. So they expect police to do their job. They are merely putting pressure on government, you know, uh, law enforcement officers, your labor, your home affairs, to do their job. That is what is happening here. So, we'll Daniel, are you saying that if the police don't do their center. job, you at Operation Dadula and your members will go in and do the, the police's work for them? We will force them to do it. Because there was a meeting that set the attendant register where police were part of that meeting, where police uh, were made aware that these are the houses that have been pointed out by the community. So there was an agreement, a prior agreement before going there to our surprise when we arrived there. They, instead of going in to assist the community, to satisfy the community, where the community was supposed to witness, they pulled back instead. Whereas in other areas, they don't do that. Why specifically in that house? Do, do you not fear, however, that this could become quite a heated situation. I mean, we're looking at pictures while I'm speaking to you, we're looking at pictures of your various um, um, programs that you've put out over various weekends in different areas, your marches. Um, there's a picture there, uh, usually when Tlanchla Lakslamini appears, he's dressed in full uh, camouflage army gear with flak jackets and your members are wearing camouflage pants and you're marching. Um, are you not fearful that that aggressive demeanor might be misconstrued if you are clearly saying that you are wanting to do the bidding of your community? Uh if crime is being committed and injustice being committed against the people of South Africa, don't expect them to take their roses and say, please give us back our, our country. Please stop the crime that you are busy, you know, you are busy feeding our children drugs and all that. You, you don't expect us to carry roses when we do that. Okay, uh, I'm going to leave it there, but just tell me very quickly, you're at Joburg Central right now. What are you expecting to happen next there, and have you spoken to uh, Ntlantla Lux Lamini? Yes, we've been, we, we, we've been with him until the past 10 minutes. They are still uh, charging informally, but the attorney is around trying to arrange bail for him. Uh, unconfirmed... Uh, reporter that he'll be appearing at a road report uh, court tomorrow morning uh, but uh, as soon as that is definitely confirmed it will be communicated throughout south africa okay thank you for your time that's daniel radebe he's the operation uh, dudula uh, senior member deputy chairperson i believe we thank him for his time